Hello, Dusty Lake. Welcome back. Um, okay, last time I explained to you about the disciples of uh, Lord Jalwang uh, Sambajare of Trubagaju lineage. Now I would like to, you know, uh, go one by one uh, details, you know, detail on the uh, let's say one by one okay let's say detail you know uh, one by one uh, on his main disciples uh, or, you know uh, their, 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 their life their, their, their stories you know very some are very interesting sort of stories some are very you know uh, funny stories and uh, some are very very you know uh, how to say full of uh, devotional uh, stories so okay so let's go and uh, <clears throat> talk about it uh, <clears throat> so you know as I told you the Gautzangpa you know the Gyalwa we call we call Gyalwa Gautzangpa there are you know three Gyalwas in Tupacaju lineage who are the three Gyalwas one is you know master the first Gyalwang Drupa Sangbajare the second is Gyalwa Gautzangpa the third is the Gyalwa Lorepa. So these three masters are sometimes known as three Jalwas of Tupas. Jalwas, you know. Jalwa means victorious one. Okay, so <clears throat> we have to now, you know, you know, go further on the uh, explanation. Okay, so now I would like to, you know go through the biography of uh, Jalwang Gosangpa. Jalwang Gosangpa who you know pioneered, uh, pioneered in uh, you know uh, establishing the Upper Dupa. He was the you know uh, you, how to say founder of Upper Dupa. Upper Dupa or let's say okay Upper Dupa. Dupa Kaju lineage. <coughs> okay in the Dupa Kaju lineage uh, in the upper region of Tibet and Himalayan regions as well as beyond Himalayan uh, region and uh, Gyalwang uh, Gwetsangpa was uh, Gyalwa Gwetsangpa was known as uh, his name his name was actually uh, Gyalwa Gwetsangpa um, Gyalwa Gwetsangpa Gombo Dorje okay so Gombo Dorje so okay he existed you know 1189 to 1258 that means the end of the uh, 12th century and beginning of the 13th century quite early you know uh, when he was born in you know central tibet uh, his other two uh, siblings brothers were already died you know and uh, his uh, childhood was uh, not that great, you know, was a bit, uh, you know, bad, you know. He had a, uh, how to say, difficult, uh, you know, child time. Um, because um, <clears throat> his um, parents were separated uh, due to financial problems. Uh, you know, nowadays also we had some, you know, stories uh, like that, you know. So his mother went uh, with a wealthy doctor or other with the other man with a wealthy one, you know, and left his father and uh, and she left, uh, you know, uh, she left uh, the father, she left to father and uh, uh, to him uh, uh, some, you know, let's say properties. And that time uh, they, you know, owned uh, like uh, 30 gods and sheep, you know, and a uh, field uh, which uh, is uh, <laughs> no more good for harvesting or something like that so they had a very uh, uh, poor you know uh, um, how to say uh, uh, livelihood that was poor you know <coughs> or let's say difficult time um, later on his father was also died and uh, Sometimes it says he, his father was uh, died of uh, tuberculosis. tuberculosis. We, in Tibetan we call it Pegemukpo or something like that. It's something to do with lungs, you know. So he was died and then he was the only, you know, maybe teenager, 
he was very young and uh, he has to you know earn his own bread that time he he had a very uh, difficult ta- ta- time but uh, he he was good looking he was charming and he, he can also sing and perform something you know so he earned like you know performing something you know and uh, people like it when people see and hear his songs and uh, you know performance they forget all the you know their uh, daily problems and so on and so you know um sometimes he earned the money by you know uh, re- uh, reading holy texts you know uh, at uh, families you know and he can also get some money you know uh, and uh, you know earn something from them and uh, but that was not sufficient you know to 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 lead a life you know decent life uh somehow he at the sta- at the age of uh, 16 went to lhasa uh and uh, he saw you know like chokang temples you know and other temples and then the people there you know very devotional you know carrying devotional activities doing dharma activities doing prayers and so on he was very inspired by that and uh, he felt a deep sense of you know uh you know how to say let's say renouncement you know he felt a uh, renouncement uh, to 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 felt aversion uh, against the worldly life he he don't see any you know essence in uh, worldly life he want to you know quit this life and uh, you know adapt uh, or adopt a spiritual life he want to really adopt spiritual life mm, then he studied under different masters there and he learned something you know um and uh, like masters like ali katambas and ali you know chief practitioners and ali kajus and nyamas you know but he was not so you know fully uh, you know uh, ripen or satisfied um after that uh, he once while sleep sleeping got a prophecy of uh, you know one goddess that uh, he should go to you know uh, ralung and uh, you know and uh, learn there you will meet their ma- your master um, he didn't rely on that uh, prophecy and one day he heard you know uh, the people of uh, ralung or let's say sang singing a song you know that um, in ralung you know monastery there is a you know glorious uh, lord sangbajere who is you know uh, for all sentient beings like that you know as soon as he heard that song he was like very touched deeply touched and uh, he would like to you know see you know his master he want to go there and uh, you know he want to receive teachings uh, from from him um and one day he you know went there uh, to you know get the audience of uh, his master and luckily he got the audience of master and master also knew that uh, this you know boy is not ordinary one so and then he admitted him in his uh, monastery as a monk you know he cut off his uh, uh you know hair and uh, gave his uh, gave gave him a name new name uh gombotorje you know gombotorje He, he gave him a, a name monk name kompotorje and uh, monk wow you know we we say novice uh, novice wow we call it so for the beginners you know so he studied under uh, his uh, master there uh, and the master gave him uh, teaching as soon as he got the teachings from his master he was very eager to practice it you know he sincerely want to practice and he practiced it sincerely and uh, he took it to his heart and uh, once he was you know uh, doing <clears throat> meditation um you know a mouse you know or rat you know chewed his uh, rope very single rope rope w- w- what he owned you know and he was like he got very how to say frustrated or let's say angry and uh, he want to you know do something but uh, he was learned and he 
he was a monk, you know, and he was thinking uh, on the, you know, precepts of uh, Buddhist, Buddhist precepts. He was thinking on Buddhist teaching. He was saying that, or thinking that, um, according to the, you know, Theravada tradition or Hinayana tradition, one should, you know, avoid harming others. And according to the Mayana tradition, one should, shouldn't, or one should uh, see all the sentient beings as a mother. And according to the highest Vajrayana, let's say, concept or perception, one should uh, see or judge all the, you know, sentient beings uh, as a, you know, master, as a, how to say, deity, not uh, as an ordinary person. Uh, so, as soon as he, you know, thought on that concept, he, you know, how to say, got a wisdom, you know, that uh, from, or let's say, <laughs> he did a pledge, uh, now on I will, you know, uh, you know, practice this. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, he, whenever he went to, you know, solid, solitary, uh, uh, how does it practice, in the mountains uh, where he, you know, where he had to practice, you know, <clears throat> uh, seriously, for months, for years, you know, um, you know, he did many practices <clears throat> after that, and um, you know, he when he when he you know he was in the seclu how to say secluded uh, sec we, we call we call it seclusion sum you know in Tibetan sum seclu seclusion or uh, seclusion practice in the remote area he only one person he in the cave or in one mostly cave you know um, uh, he whenever he you know he was sick whenever he go go through hardships you know whatever you know he took it as you know uh, purification purify his bad karmas and so on you know he really gone through it uh, without any uh, disruption he carried his uh, retreat very seriously uh, whatever the master taught him and uh, the relation between uh, he and his uh, master was so great they are like a father and son you know mm, he never scold him or whatever you know um, and he, when once he want to go to study under a Dregunkaju uh, master, master allowed him to go and study there, you know, like that, you know, <clears throat> they were very, they, they have a very, you know, let's say pure loyalty between master and uh, uh, disciple. And that should be Kaju, you know, Kaju should be like that, not that uh, <laughs> fighting, you know, <laughs> nowadays, you know, uh, the master and uh, disciple relation is something very funny. Uh, the you know students uh, uh, take it as a you know friendly way. They they think that I'm the friend of my uh, uh, my master. You know, as in the West, uh, people used to say, you know, my father is like uh, my friend. My mother is like my friend. So you know, and this very trend of saying you know. They also, you know, uh, uh, cover on the spiritual practice. In spiritual practice, you cannot say, you know, you cannot see your master as a, a friend. It's a problem, you know, especially in the Vajrayana practice, you can't say that. So be careful, you know, when you say that. <coughs> okay, so um, after the uh, demise of his master, <clears throat> um, he followed his uh, master's last word, last, let's say, advice. Uh, master Sangbajere, you know, at the, for the last time, he 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 he, he taught to his uh, you know disciples that uh, you give up all the you know worldly concerns, you know. In this life, uh, or let's give up concerns about uh, this life, and uh, stay in solitary, uh, solitary 
mountains and practice there okay so he, that was the uh, very last uh, his you know uh, advice you know that means uh, don't attach to this life you know do practice in remote areas in the caves in the mountains in the snow mountains in like that you know so that was a very you know strong uh, advice <coughs> for the uh, yogis or monks of uh, tupakaji lineage he followed that very seriously and uh, he meditated uh, for three years in Lhota Kharchu uh, where also his master once meditated and uh, he also subdued there one of the Kaju uh, Dharma protector Nyonka Kaju Dharma protector Nyonka was quite famous uh, because of you know these masters who you know subdued you know before they were a bit you know wrathful and now they subdued and then they you know conquered them and uh, they put them as a servant for the dharma you know <coughs> so uh, at the age of 25 um, he was curious to visit holy uh, places of uh, you know india and uh, himalayas you know so he got the permission of uh, the second seat holder of the Ralung uh, monastery and and uh, he was allowed to go to India he begged for uh, you know allowance and master gave him master at that time master Andre Andre was the master and uh, he traveled to India let's say master uh, Gosangba traveled to India at that time you know 13th century <laughs> you know at Tibetan you know maybe he was the first guy you know first Tibetan who uh, you know went to some unknown places very unknown to Tibetan people you know even to unknown to Tibetan uh, you know translators and uh, <coughs> other you know previous uh, travelers so he went actually uh, to um, the Chakrasambhava holy places of Chakrasambhava or deity Chakrasambhava uh, we call Demchok uh, there are 24, 24 Demchok places in Himalaya uh, around Himalaya and uh, also uh, you know in India the rest are in the most of them are in India so he went there he, he, he and and that was also a kind of uh, you know master's influence because master, his master, somebody really practiced uh, Chakra Samba very, you know, uh, very seriously or very sincerely. Uh, that's why he, you know, uh, was interested to visit all those uh, um, Chakra Samba uh, sacred places in India. Uh, he went to, you know, uh, Ladakh, uh, you know, uh, Lada Gutsang, you know, nowadays there is a cave, you know, of him, uh, Lada Gutsang. So, in 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 Lada Gutsang, he meditated for very long, you know, he, he meditated there long. He, that that Gutsang is a very remote place, you know, situated uh, above or on the peak of uh, Hemi's monastery. When you go to Ladakh, you should visit uh, Hemi, Hemi's monastery, and uh, on the top of the monastery. On the top of the peak, uh, you can find the Gutsang uh, cave and monastery. There is a monastery was uh, later situated, or there's a later, later uh, established. Uh, previously, at his time, you know, on a cave, uh, and uh, he used to he he, uh, he used to say, you know, <coughs> I Gutsang as a you know a meditator, and uh, you you know. Uh, the vulture you know who lives there at his time you know and the cave you know we three are the you know how to say you know how to say dwellers in that place and uh, uh, so you know <coughs> okay inhabitants of that place <coughs> so he really uh, re uh, meditated there uh, uh, how to say sincerely or uh, he meditated <laughs> only he was there you know and he realized uh, many inner uh, uh, 
how to say, spiritual uh, realization or uh, you know experiences and so on and people used to say if after he got like enlightenment or it's not fully enlightenment but it, it was like a stages of bodhisattvas he was quite high, uh, he was above the you know uh, first uh, stages of bodhisattva he used to f- flew you know fly he used to fly uh, one mountain to other mountain because in ladakh you know there are many mountains you know and uh, he 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 could fly you know one to other other uh, mountains or in his med- meditation with his meditation power okay mm, so after that he went to lahol and spiti let's say mostly in lahol he spent uh, his time you know and uh, in lahol uh, you know there are many uh, places where he uh, he went there two time you know one time uh, he meditated there and uh, you know uh, how to say for a long time mostly in summer in winter it's quite difficult to travel you know cross the himalayan uh, himalayan uh, mountains so there is a uh, in in uh, we call nowadays we call karsha karsha previously it was it was known as uh, maybe lahol or nowadays previously also lahol or karsha karsha you know nowadays karsha so in karsha he uh, there is uh, one you know very uh, sacred mountain called uh, tilburi tilburi means uh, ganta uh, pahar or of uh, in, in 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 indian you know ganda pahar so that was actually uh, uh, named after the visit of uh, the mahasida you know tilpupa gantapa one of the eight, 80 sidas of india so who used to meditate uh, meditate uh, on that mountain in one cave you know so uh, people used to go there to sak sak sakumumbulate sakumumbulate the mountain you know the because that mountain is the you know abode of uh, deity chakra sambhava so there uh, is a you know cave called sila cave sila there are many caves you know big caves smaller caves and so on you know uh, in in uh, at tilpuri so uh, there is also uh, <coughs> uh you know uh, his cave uh, how to say uh gosambas cave where he used to meditate and he left you know uh, his uh, head print his head print is in the uh, cave you could uh, see if you go there and uh, many, many people go to see that you know uh, and to get his blessing and so on you know because um, uh, uh, master gosampa you know after leaving that place he you know prayed whoever visit uh, these places may get enlightened or may get uh, success in uh, um, meditation and dharma practice okay so you know i think uh, master gosangpa you know loved that place that place is so holy and sacred the people were nice you know and very you know how to say divine you know, divine place there you know and people are very divine and devoted you know and uh, as i told you so he he lived there you know quite long and meditated there and uh, there is also <coughs> in, uh, in in there is nowadays there is a kardang monastery uh, you know kardang gumpa kardang monastery so in kardang monastery there is a uh, you know prince of his niece you know we call it uh, kardang shapche that means a uh, uh, footprint of jalo uh, gosangba at uh, kardang monastery so you know kardang monastery is very famous there and uh, you know there is also story you know story once he was meditating at tilburi uh, or ganda pahar he saw you know a kind of uh, 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 okay he saw let's say okay we go back. okay uh, we go back to 
<clears throat> okay, while he was meditating on that mountain, you know, um, he saw um, in uh, you know <clears throat> in gondola. Uh, let's say in 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 there is a gondola castle there in uh, Karsha and in Lahul, you know, <clears throat> and. Uh, uh, Gosangpa was meditating at uh, Sila, that cave, you know, at uh, Tilburi, and uh, he saw, you know, from far uh, in Gondla, Gondla village. He saw from his meditation power, he was, his eyes was very sharp, he saw a uh, Dakini, you know, he saw a Dakini there uh, who was, you know, uh, <coughs> how to say, cleaning her uh, roof with, uh, how to say, roof with the one broom. He, she, with the broom, she was trying to, you know, uh, clean off uh, the snows there, you know, in the snow, there are snow on his, her roof, so she was like trying to, you know, you know, uh, clean up that, and uh, she, you know, how to say, uh, slipped her broom uh, from her hand and uh, it fell on the ground, f you know, from one story. But what he, what she does or what she did was that uh, she you know you know stretch her long with her she stretch her you know hand as long as one story and then uh, you know took it back you know and this inc very incident was you know uh, seen by master you know who was meditating in the cave and she, he thought that is you know not unusual uh, woman that is a kandoma we call it you know a kind of a dark in or angel you know so he flew to that roof of the village you know gondola village as soon as he reached there uh, that you know dark in you know uh, you know flew back or let's say flew away flew away and uh, you know made a three cycle at uh, the tilburi mountain you know the sacred mountain of chakrasambhava where he meditated and then <coughs> Again, uh, went back to <coughs> Gondla uh, village, uh, you know, and uh, Master Gwezamba was also, you know, uh, flying or flying after her, you know, chasing her, you know, with with his flight or with his, you know, flying power. So he and then uh, and and she that darkeny, you know, dissolved into one rock, and uh, and then. Uh, Master Gosangpa, you know, um, on that very um, rock, you know, where she dissolved, he sat down, you know, and he kneeled down, kneeled down, let's say, kneeled down, and uh, then he, uh, you know, <coughs> and kneeled down there, you know, and uh, and after that, you know, um, his, how to say, knees prints. And uh, you know his genital uh, print is you know how to say born on that um, uh, the rock. So on that piece of rock, you can till today you can see you know that print. You know two knees, knee prints and one genital print. You can see there. So people used to go there and see that you know, uh, and then the, so that in that nowadays they the the they build a um, monastery on that uh, top of the rock. And there is a, monast a monastery. If you go want to uh, see that, you can visit uh, Lahul. Okay, so that's called that's called uh, you know Shapche Gumba nowadays footprint uh, monastery. And uh, you see, and uh, he has uh, also meditated. Uh, you know. In the local area, you know, caves, and uh, uh, so one of his, uh, you know, uh, place was uh, known as uh, Guizhang Village. There's a village called Guizhang Village where he used to uh, meditate on the top of uh, the village. That means from village, if you walk uh, 20 minutes, you can uh, see a cave where he used to meditate, and uh, in that very cave you can also find his footprints and you know like that and uh, in that village you can also find footprints of Dakini you know and of the female goddess uh, so 
So um, there is also one place called uh, Yurdung Gomba or Yurzong Gomba. Yurzong Gomba, yeah, under the um, you know mountain at, at the you know uh, how to say root of the mountain, you can see uh, Yurdung Yur Cave. There is a cave previously. Nowadays they build a monastery there. So that is known as Yurdung Gomba. Yurzong actually Yurzong. Yurzong Gomba means Yurzong Monastery. So. In Yurzong Monastery, he also meditated uh, there uh, for uh, a long time, you know. <coughs> and uh, also, there is uh, also, um, how to say, a uh, footprint of Kyawa uh, Kyotsangpa, you know. <coughs> and uh, if you go to Tilburi, there are also many caves uh, where he left you know uh, like uh, his body prints his head prints his footprints and hand prints whatever you know so that was miracle you know he still you know or till today you can see it you know so so people uh, of that place lahul revered him very much and uh, and he was the first you know tibetan uh, you know trooper master who was successfully uh, you know uh, meditated there and uh, showed his miracle power and also you know uh, traveled to from there he traveled to different places he he traveled to you know uh, he traveled to Jalandhar nowadays in Punjab maybe Jaland we call it Jalandhar nowadays in Jaland Jalandhar is a you know uh, it's in Punjab nowadays, so he went there, you know, there are uh, some, you know, places or that Jalandhar, that, that place is, uh, is, is regarded as the, you know, abode of uh, Chakra Sambhava. So there are some cemeteries or there were some cemeteries where, so he actually from Lahul, you know, uh, he with, uh, he met there one uh, Tibetan translator known as Gar, uh, Gar Lozawa. So with him, you know, he went to uh, all these places, you know. So first he uh, uh, visited on the way uh, this very, you know, uh, how to say, <coughs> Jawala Muki. There, there is, um, you know, place or let's say uh, burning water or let's say burning water place. Uh, the Hindus and Buddhists regarded that as a holy place and all of them go there and nowadays pilgrims you know pilgrimage they, they used to do pilgrimage there you know they go there and then they do pujas or you know prayers there so he visited that place also and uh, and uh, and then father father to Jalandhar you know in Punjab and you know, also and uh, he visited all those cemeteries or whatever you know so temples and so and then they meditated there and uh, they had a very great experience in a uh, you know uh, great experience uh, in a realizations and so because of the holy place you know so he was when he was returning back you know through the kulu valley he was also robbed there by the robbers you know uh, who robbed him and uh, he he almost uh, lost everything he, although he you know uh, possessed nothing he was robbed you know uh, and uh, only one shawl you know just to cover you know his genitals and he came back to you know uh, uh, Lahul uh, people offered him again you know uh, ropes monks ropes and uh, you know and the foods and you know so like that so um that was the you know uh, <coughs> story and uh, then he you know come back to uh, tibet come back to tibet and uh, visited his uh, you know <coughs> own monastery ralung monastery where he met again the his second monastery or uh, let's say his second monastery and uh, he took you know the ordination vow or let's say complete vow of the monk and he became complete let's say fully monk you know ordained monk he became uh, ordained monk and then um, he you know 
once he was uh, you know uh, his master you know told uh, him to go to meditate at the place called pomkhabab pomkhabab there is a place you know and he was practicing there for uh, three years retreat and uh, nearby lake was suddenly you know how to say overflowed and gave a flood and uh, his meditational hurt you know he got uh, hurt you know and uh, his meditational uh, hurt uh, hurt was uh, halfly filled you know with the water because of the flood but uh, with his you know determination and uh, dedication he didn't wake up from meditation he sat there and he continuously meditated in that hut even the, you know there is a danger of uh, you know how to say <coughs> uh, you know sinking or you know flushed away by the water but he remained there meditating <coughs> uh, okay so um, he went to Tsari, you know, Tsari Nenang, after that, uh, as the advice of uh, Master Vendre Tharma Senge, Vendre Tharma Senge, his teacher, second teacher, and uh, he went to Tsari, you know, mountain, Tsari mountain, uh, Nenang called, it's called Nenang, and where he, you know, uh, not only meditated there, but also he used to help, you know, as like a port- porter, a servant, you know, porter, you know, he helped those you know uh, you know house travelers or uh, yogis or monks and nuns who travel to Tsari for a pilgrimage he took all the luggage on he himself you know he took all the luggage you know you know to and fro you know go up on the mountain you know then after you know delivering their luggages he came back you know with the other you know monks and nuns and yogis who have finished their medical station you know, going back to home they he helped you know so and he did that many time you know and once uh, his back was uh, wounded and uh, worn out or torn out and uh, the inner you know how to say organs were visible you can see so much you know how to say perseverance uh, he uh, he he gone through due to or due to purify his uh, defilements and uh, negativities or bad karmas. He was successful uh, to serve uh, those yogis and uh, he got the name Yellow Donkey, you know. So he heard, he worked so hard, you know, for them just, just to help them, you know. Um, so he got the Yellow Donkey, he got name, you know, as a nickname. And once he was meditating there, you know, in Sari and Mount Kailash, he, you know, he got many lause, lause, you know, this small insect on his body, full, you know, full. He was three times maybe he got full in his body all this lause, 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 lause. We call it lause, right? So which he, you know, bites and you know, drink blood and from our body. So he first he thought to you know uh, you know throw away. Later he thought uh, if he threw them away, throw them away, they will die. So he didn't throw them. He kept uh, on his body and meditate, continue meditate. You know, uh, so he he you know seriously and he was you know with the compassion you know for those you know uh, lo- loise and. Uh, and it was he was really sick or ill you know but he never you know gave up he his meditation and, and he continued and uh, all these you know uh, uh, lause uh, you know gradually vanished and uh, and uh, and his uh, retreat time was also uh, ended with uh, very uh, good achievement like uh, inner realizations, you know, Mahamudra views, you know, uh, reaching, uh, you know, certain stages of uh, meditational inner practice, you know, so like that. So uh, you have to, you know, really do it in that way actually if you are a good uh, meditator. 
all this he did in order to purify his defilements or negativities okay so um, before he was died he uh, you know advice to those um, also those uh, his disciples and followers that uh, don't build up uh, monasteries and don't uh, you know take you know how to say taxes or something like that from the village people you know for the building up monasteries or like that you know and instead uh, you should uh, uh, he, he, he told instead they should meditate you know and uh, go for a solid solitary uh, med meditation and practice in the remote area as his master uh, you know advise him you know he advised him his own followers so he got some students you know main students uh, he had mainly uh, four great disciples now one is yangunpa uh, gelsen gelsen pelsang or gelsen pel yangunpa and the uh, second in the line of his disciple was ojen uh, ojenpa rinchim pelsang ojenpa rinchim pelsang also uh, traveled to lahol india at that time you know 13th century and uh, madunpa also was very famous you know he went to you know nowadays sum valley he you know established monasteries and he did many dharma activities there he established two palinich in uh, sum valley nowadays nepal uh, tibet border there is a valley you know in nepal it, it belongs to nepal nowadays and then the fourth uh, disciple was bari or Pari Chilkarwa, Pari Chilkarwa. They all are, you know, existed in 13th century, almost that they lived uh, exactly, you know, in the in, in 13th century. They are at the same time, you know, they lived for the same time, you know, as, uh, you know, after the uh, demise of their beloved uh, master, Gosangpa. Okay, so here I would like to stop uh, and uh, I've uh, I hope you, you have understood and uh, you enjoyed uh, the biography of, uh, you know, Jalwa uh, Kutsangpa. Thank you for watching.